We would like to welcome Joe Stockton from Contemporary Controls. Obviously, we've been working on their equipment all week. They have been a huge supporter of the Best Center um, for quite a while. They've given us um, discounts for educational, all kinds of things. So, Joe? I'll take it away. Just for a functional point of view, I'm the sales manager, so don't expect anything technical, okay? <laughs> Got it, folks? Good. No. And it, also, as you use our products, please always feel free to, to call in to utilize our, our folks' abilities, their knowledge. Plus, guess what? We learn from you folks, too, as to what the heck's going on in the real world. So anyway, I'm going to spend a little time telling you about contemporary controls in the beginning here, so get a flavor for us. And then I want to talk about what we think we have as support materials for you. You may know all of them already. This may be a review for you. Maybe some of you folks will learn something new. But anyway, con Contemporary Controls designs, manufactures, and supports networking and control products used in various automation industries where performance and reliability are essential. We don't only focus on HVAC. We do lots of other stuff, too. So be aware. These products, along with our comprehensive design experience with hardware, software, and protocols, allows us to offer original design manufacturing ODM services where we provide the product you require under your brand to speed development. Our designs are based upon open hardware and open software platforms that are ready to execute your control or networking applications. We do custom stuff for people. Obviously, I don't think that'll apply to you folks, but realize that we're very open-oriented, so nothing that we do has licenses associated with it. Looking at the Bass Automation product line, the one you're familiar with, Supervisors is the one you're working with right now, the Bass View 3. We also do routers that typically take uh, protocol and convert it from one physical level to another. That's our routers. We do gateways that take one protocol and convert it to a different protocol. Uh, here we do Modbus to BACnet IP, and we also do an Ocean to BACnet IP. Controllers, which you folks are familiar with. We do communicating thermostats, which are uh, uh, Wi-Fi, BACnet Wi-Fi and or, a back, I shouldn't say or, or a BACnet MSTP. We also just have simple I.O. modules so that you can add to Modbus, BACnet IP, uh, or BACnet MSTP. And then, of course, we do our ODM manufacturing. The other product line that you'll probably be familiar with is the control link at the 1 o'clock position you see on managed switches. These are basically plug and play. We have a diagnostic switch, and what we do there is we break the switch in order to make it diagnostic so that any message that comes in gets blurted out of all the other ports. You can use uh, Wireshark to capture those packets to look at the information on the wire. Media converters, as you might guess, takes copper, converts it to fiber and fiber to copper. IP routers uh, to, to manage networks. Uh, secure remote access, which is cellular typically, or it could be wired. And then we do power over ethernet, and we do some UL864. So we got a whole variety of stuff. That's, those items typically apply to building automation. Okay, I love to say, this is my favorite sentence, what we design, we make and support. Okay, we actually do designing in Downers Grove, which is our main, and we also do some design work in Shuzhou, China. We have some equipment uh, in Downers Grove where obviously we build stuff. We build stuff in China. The stuff we build stateside is primarily the more complex products. The stuff we build uh, in China is the simple, uh, everyday uh, switch type products. We're also ISO certified. Four locations worldwide, again, Downers Grove, Shuzhou, China. We have an office in uh, the UK, and we have an office in Leipzig, Germany. So we're a small company, but we're kind of all over the world. Some of our customers, uh, Distech, for example, Ray Marine, Siemens, Johnson Controls, B&B uh, &B Electronics, and a whole lot more. But these are, these are the ones George picked. <laughs> George is our owner, by the way. Uh, company's history is marked in eras. I like uh, this presentation because it's 75 through 79. That's when the company started. Uh, George was involved in PLC programming at my favorite account, Caterpillar Tractor. And he also did some work for Johnson and some other things. 1980 to 89, George got involved with the standard bus board manufacturer. Then 90 to 92, one of the better customers, Hollister, actually purchased contemporary controls. 
and they were doing a terrible job in the industrial side of the business. So George bought it back, and then in 93 to the present, we do networking and controls. Uh, some of the protocols we support are ArcNet, and we still support ArcNet, by the way, CAN, Ethernet, and uh, we're a BACnet supplier. And we did the worldwide expansion out of the offices in the UK, Germany, and China. Okay, ArcNet. Anybody know what ArcNet is? Okay, good. Well, that's where we originally started. We built a lot of equipment for Johnson Controls, and that really got us up and running. Uh, we also have IEU, so if you want to have another website rather than see controls, you can go to Industrial Ethernet University. We sponsor that website. Uh, a lot of it is based on uh, newsletter ar articles that we wrote for our, uh, news, uh, our email newsletters, and it's a good way to get students involved with Ethernet because they're have to, in order to use stuff these days, you've got to know what an IP address is. And you got to know what a subnet is, and you got to know how to change it and why you want to change it. So there's a lot of in information there. And we talk about our course material that we put together. There's essentials, and there's electives, and then we also have some guest lectures. Okay, so it's a good website to go and visit if you haven't. We also are involved in the creation of the Sedona Alliance. All of our controllers use Sedona, and we were one of the first ones to jump onto it, uh, Tritium introduced Sedona, I don't know, 10, 12, 15 years ago, whenever they started. They have since decided not to support it. They figured out they couldn't make any money at it, in my opinion. So that's why they, they got out of it. But we created the Sedona Alliance. There's several manufacturers, and there's a community of people that build things within that uh, Sedona framework. Our definition of an open controller, contemporary control defines an open controller as built on open standards, free of license and point count does not incorporate a proprietary programming language requiring unique training or certification, does not require a restricted programming tool only available to partners, does not require a sign-up fee or user fee to acquire or use the technology. Uh, technical information on the technology is readily available on the Internet and no restrictions on systems integrators, contractors, or educators purchasing the controller. So we're about as open as you can get, as opposed to some other companies. All right. The question is, how can we help the best center? Okay, this is... Now, what have we done that we think we've helped you with? Well, we have license-free, vast control, Sedona open controllers, supervisors, and network inter infrastructure products with an educational discount. We provided no charge the vast control tool set consisting of the Sedona application editor, BAS backup, and then the BAS emulator. Does everybody know about the BAS control tool set? Yay, all right. And the best part is your students can download it. It's free, uh, and hopefully they can build some programs in there. You can maybe grade them on them. Uh, they, you could go and do a whole course, if you will, without having any hardware now. It may be a little tough, but you literally could do that. And then provided no charge, pre-built Sedona applications. We'll talk a little about that. I don't know if you folks realize we do have them up there. Then we have access to industrial university. And then BDT. Anybody know what BDT is? Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about BDT. What is BAS Control? BAS Control is an open communications network in IP Ethernet, an open industry supported building automation protocol in BACnet, an open control language that is license free in Sedona, a programming tool that is available to all without restriction in the Sedona application editor, we call it SAE, and access to a Sedona community where there is sharing of development, know-how, and applications for the common good. Uh, just some applications. We're really into RTUs. It's kind of a sort of a focus that we promote. I, I've, we've done some hair handlers and we've done some pump control. We don't do that, by the way. Systems integrators do that. We are not a systems integrator. What we are is a manufacturer of, a, of hardware. How's that? and software. Okay, the BAS Control 22, I think you folks probably know a lot about this already. BACnet IP compliant, BASC device profile, BACnet server with a client option. I know there was some conversation about moving variables or information from one controller to another. There is a client capability in the BAS Control as long as it's a BAS Control with a C in it, BAS Control-22CR. It's just an R. There's no client in it. 
Okay, then there's dual Ethernet ports via built-in switch. And at this point, I'm going to say something George will hit me for, but we're having a miserable time trying to get the switch, so the Bass Control 22 is currently unavailable. Okay, I ain't got none, plain English, unless I can find switches, and right now they're scheduled to come in on thing in January of 23. So we're working hard on trying. Yeah, yeah. If you want to talk about component problems, we'll go and have a couple beers. Or in my case, maybe something a little stronger. But anyway, <laughs> so then we have dual port Ethernet. Well, this one does have. We're looking at doing. We're, we're doing on some modifications to do some other things. We may have some other controllers coming up that don't have dual ports because we can't get the darn switch. Anyway, neither here nor there. Uh, powered by Sedona virtual machine inside, freely programmable or configurable, 24 volt AC DC powered. And then, of course, our classic eight universal inputs, thermistor resistance, analog value, uh, pardon me, analog voltage, binary input or pulse inputs, four binary inputs, four analog voltage outputs, and then six relay outs. And you probably all have seen the Bass Control main page. Uh, and then, of course, there's virtual points so that you can communicate to a BACnet client or uh, you can uh, act as a server. In web components, this allows you to configure up some min-max values that you can write to components in the Sedona from a web page. That means that you can create user pages where they don't get into the program, but they can fine-tune the operation by changing values that you put into the uh, programming logic. And then, of course, the uh, ever-popular function block programming, linking them by drag dragging from point to point. And then why we like Sedona, the graphical experience of selecting components, configuring parameters, and linking components to create applications is easy to do and to explain to others. The technology is open source, royalty free, and supported by several comp companies, so the opportunity exists to share experiences. It's a community exists of users who create applications and developers who make components and virtual machines. You know, we have some customers that actually build their own Sedona component blocks, and we look at them and go, e -e okay. And, uh, you know, but they know what they're doing. Think of a, a component, a Sedona component is just a subroutine. So whatever you put into it, you expect to get certain results out. So if a customer knows what he really wants, he can put in, build it, the logic internally, and build himself a nice function block. In fact, I think I've seen one of them that's got kind of a like 57 points on it that he uses. It's like, wow. Okay. And anyway, kind of interesting. Uh, programming debugging is fast because the effect of any changes is seen instantly. If you notice when you're programming, if you change something, it instantly changes. It's always in a runtime mode, if you will. Fast control tool set. Okay, this is the biggie again. All you need is the register. You folks, I think, are very familiar. You get the emulator for control emulation on a PC. You get the Sedona's application editor, and then you get Bass Backup, so you, your students can uh, save their work and then come to class and download it and maybe actually get it to work in a real piece of hardware, and they can see it works, and yay, or they go, oh, i got to rework this. <laughs> okay, so you get to do it either way. Uh, one thing you should know is that right now, the uh, you all have Bass Views. Great, thank you. Uh, the Bass View, uh, if you set up your... PC in the emulation mode and pick one of the controllers, you can then use the Bass View and interrogate the PC and bring in the points from your emulated controller. So uh, it, it's kind of cute you can do that. You don't, you don't need a controller to play with the Bass View in your PC, but keep that in mind. Uh, okay, the Sedona tool, I, you folks probably are very familiar with this. There's a navigation pane that shows you what components you've dropped in what order. you got the kits pane that tells you uh, whether you're going to be doing math or logic or uh, some other function, HVAC, there are a couple HVAC folders in there. And then there's, of course, the wire sheet where everybody gets the connecting and go, wow, this is cool. And then you get the right-hand side where you're doing the properties pane so you can enable certain things, disable, put in values, that kind of thing. And there's the Bass Emulator. I'm going to say everybody knows about the Bass Emulator, so I won't espouse that anymore. Bass Backup, again, great tool. You back up a project, restore a project. More for us system integrators, you can clone a project for multiple controllers, and you can put the SACS data in from the controller. 
Uh, this is the other thing I don't know if you know we have up there, is you can grab actual applications for RTUs and bring them on down into your controller or just bring it on down in, into the uh, uh, emulation and look at it. Uh, these five applications were actually built by a systems integrator. Again, we're not systems integrators, not what we do in life. But we do have a few system integrators that we work closely with. This happened to be done by John Vietti. So thank you, John. Uh, part of the package when you download it in, includes the necessary kits in a zip file. You do get a sequence of operation in Word format for job submittal. Because you guys were talking about sequence of operation, so this may be a good thing for your students to look at just to get a flavor with some of the more complex sequence of operations might look like. You get a points list in an Excel format for backend integration. You get a sample of the electrical wiring diagram uh, if you wanted to see how a, somebody would actually produce one of those. And then you get a system schematic showing the control points and devices. So it, it, there's five of these, but just if you pull down one package, you get all that information. In. And again, it may not be that for your students uh, something that you're going to propose they do, but maybe it's just so they kind of kind of look at what one systems integrator in the industry believes has to be done in order to accomplish a project. Here's a schematic diagram. I always love these things, you know. They stare at them and go, oh, that's kind of cool. But kind of useless unless you have the sequence of operating. Well, here's the points list. Okay, so this might be, you know, something, again, the student could look at and say, oh, I want to create a points list that looks like this. You folks each may have a different format you use, but again, you know, as we promote Teach Yourself Sedona, the best way to, to learn Sedona is to try it by downloading SAE, Sedona Application Editor, to your Windows PC and connecting to the BAS emulator and creating a program. Contemporary Controls has multi-part video series on its website devoted to SAE. Again, that's all available to you guys if it somehow helps with the students or helps you determine how to put your uh, curriculum together. And there is ample documentation on our website that explains the functioning of the components. <clears throat> One of my favorite sentences, just try it, everything's free. Fast you three, small building supervisor, you guys are working on that this session and uh, I hope it's going well. If you guys have any questions, I can try to answer them or I can get back to, the, as I like to say, I get back to the ranch and ask, ask them the questions, see if they can help me out. So. Uh, then the uh, Bass Pi 12 point do Pi daughter boards. Uh, Larry asked me earlier if you can run a Pi without the daughter board, and the answer is no. You need the daughter board on the Pi in order to have it become a small controller for you. If you just load the SD card and load it in the Pi, nothing will happen. So uh, you, need, you need the daughter board. And we can still make these. Thank goodness there's no issues. The other problem, though, is can you find yourself a Pi? We, we can't find pies, so I mean, it's, you know, and if you can't find a pie, it's, you know, 150 or 200 bucks or whatever, whatever they've gone to. It used to be great for the students because, you know, they buy the $35 pie, they put on the $79 board, and for 112 or whatever, they have themselves really a back neck controller at that point, which is, I think is cool. But anyway, so the 12-point card, six universal inputs, six relays out, or the other version, six universal inputs, four relay, and two analog outs. Uh, 10 100 uh, Sedona function block programming and again the 24 virtuals the 48 web components and it's compatible with the bass control tool set so that's one of the selections in the emulation package uh, oops there we go and then uh, George put this one in teach yourself backnet instead of purchasing the 1434 page backnet standard from ASHRAE for $125 simply download for free the BACnet discovery tool from Contemporary Control. Okay, and I use BDT quite often. With BDT, you can learn the structure of BACnet objects, properties, and values using the search, read, write, and scan features of BDT. If you have two computers, you can run BDT on one computer to query a BAS emulation on another computer without the expense of purchasing a BACnet device. So you can, just like I, I mentioned earlier, you can have your PC do an emulation of a controller and the bass view will be able to read those points for you. So this is kind of the same thing. All right, people use BDT? 
Okay, so you're going to be familiar with this. This is in our office. If you go online, it discovers all BACnet devices once search is completed. Okay, now quite often I forget the IP address of my devices. So if you run BDT, it's going to discover all the BACnet devices and you, it, one of the chunks of information in there is going to be the IP address. Okay, so if you forgot your IP address, it's just run BDT and it'll all pop up for you, okay? So anyway, so it'll tell you the device instance number, the device name, and then it'll give you the IP address. And if reached through a router, the network number and the MAC address. If you look at the, about the sixth, seventh one from the bottom, you'll see it's got a network number in there, and it's also got MAC 3 at the very end and MAC 5. So it's finding... Uh, MSTP devices through the BACnet router at that point. And then you can get an object. You just click on one of the devices and it'll bring up all the objects for you in that device. Okay. And it'll give you the object type, object instance, object description. And if you want to get the values, you double click on one of the devices. Try it. Try it again, Joe. You double click on one of the points. I've uh, back in the point and it'll bring up the value for you if it's writable you'll be able to write it if it's an analog input for example like this one you won't be able to write it if you want to keep the value refreshed you can constantly hit refresh to refresh the value and then you can also go to the device double click on that you know give you all the device information and some of that's writable as you can see the device ID and the object name and then you can write values if appropriate. In analog output, you'll be able to write the value. So you put in the value you want, hit write, and then hit refresh, and you'll see the value. I think that's it. Thank you. That's pretty quick and sweet, huh? They want to bore you too much. A lot of you sound like you're big users of it anyway, so that's great. Thank you. And again, if you have questions, always call in. We got somebody that you can talk to. As they, one of the things I love to say is we answer the phone. We may not know the answer, but we do answer the phone, you know, <laughs> because there's a lot of people that call other manufacturers and they get stuck in these crazy loops. And anyway, all right. Anything for me? Otherwise, I am done. I will return it back to Robert. He will instill information in you beyond belief. Well, I got a whole list of questions. Okay. <laughs> but I'll give other people a chance first. Okay. I have two. Fire away. So where where find the package that you're talking about, the five, five packages um, on your website? Just go to the Bass Control tool set, set. Yeah, it's in the tool set. And then once you register for it, you'll, you're able to pick up BDT or you're able to pick up the packages. Yeah. Yeah, go, go grab the tool set. Yeah, go grab the tool set. Hey, yeah. um, could you repeat the question for? Oh, I'm sorry. Purposes? The question is, where do you get the uh, the controllers, the uh, the packages for the rooftop unit examples? And that's going to be in under. Yeah, I don't think you're going to find BDT there. I don't know if you'll find. Go to go to the controllers. Go to the. Yeah, go to the controllers webpage. And then you see Bass Control Tool Set? Um, yes. Click on that. Then you're going to have to log in. Okay. And then, yeah. then that's how you get to it. Okay. It's, under the support. it's under the support. It's under support. Yeah, they put it all over. I just, I, I know how I get there. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, my other question. Yeah. Uh, I think you always talk about it. Um, I believe you were at uh, the Tritium conference. Yeah, I'm all over. Yeah, and, and you're talking about you're going to have a new version of the, the past 22? That, yeah, what they're looking at is coming up what we're calling an SR. And, and again, I don't have all the details, but what it, it's going to have an MSTP port on it. Yeah. Yeah, that, that'll have, and it'll have one uh, Ethernet port on it. Okay. And other than that, it should be the same. That's what they tell me. Okay, I, sometimes you have to shake engineering up and slap them around a little bit. What are you really doing? Yeah. So you said, I think we're saying June, July? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> not, not June. This is June. Did I tell you what year? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's <laughs>
Yeah, they're they're going to have to work on that. I know they're working on it. They're they're running prototypes this week. That I know. Now, the, 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 all and they love to sometimes reshoot the board as they like to call it. I mean, so I don't know where we're at. But but it is in. If I had to guess, if you twisted my arm, I'd probably say September October time frame to be realistic about this. Because what they, year? Yeah, <laughs> very good. You're starting to be like me. I can tell you a quick story about what year. One time. Uh, I worked for Square D Company, and they transferred the uh, Cle the Cleveland sh uh, store was closed, or sh uh, factory floor was closed, and they shipped it to Columbia, South Carolina. And of course, there was a little animosity in leaving a union town and going to the Cl Columbia, South Carolina. And so, one of the things that I was involved with was crane control, and they made these contactors that looked the size of me for crane control. And the, the uh, effort, I think, it was U.S. Steel ordered six of them or whatever it was. So we ordered six of them. I uh, entered the order and they gave me a date of whatever it was, three months. Okay. And then, uh, so the three months went by, a customer called in and said, well, when are you going to ship these? So I called the factory and they gave me a date of another three months. And I did this three times. And then finally the customer said to me, what year? <laughs> so that's where that comes from. That came from a real life experience where I kept telling customer the date that the factory gave me, only for him to come back and say to me, what year? Because we were like nine months into this and the year had, had gone by. I'm sorry, I digress as always. But, but, uh, uh, we, we don't get to use them in the fall. Probably. Yeah. Well, we don't get to use them in the fall. Yeah, realistically, if we get this thing done, it'll be September, October is my best guess. Okay. Yeah, they can all use the emulator. I mean, that's... That, that yeah, we have yeah, the twenty the twenty two won't come back probably till next year sometime. Unless they can find that switch or unless they do redesign things. You know, we're looking at a bunch of stuff. I was talking to somebody earlier. We really have a lot of component issues. Just trying to just trying to find parts is, is totally miserable. Yeah. No. Say again. How did you get your twenty twos without going to the procurement in North Carolina? Um. I think. I think you did. I, I because they you had the twenty twos for a while. Yeah, we we I don't know. I didn't purchase. The control the procurement. Oh, Andy, Andy bought them. Andy bought, yeah, Andy bought them. Um, but, but you can, we bought them. We can do it. I, I'll, I'll ask, I'll ask when I get back and let you know. I'm sorry? Yeah. EMB procurement system. Oh, okay. It's their the way they do things. Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, I don't I'll, give them. I'll ask and let you know. Yeah. yeah. You had a question, sir? Yeah. So, so as community and technical college educators, we have limited budgets, limited time and resources. We, we, uh, we invest in a product. We want to know that it's going to be around for a while and supported for a while. And, you know, we love the fact that you're open source, no license, because it's an enormous problem for us. No one understands what we do, you know, they don't understand a, a lab concept. They think everything is designed to run a building, right? right? Right. So we love your philosophy. Uh, is your com company going to survive when the, when the founder leaves, for example? What is your business model that allows you to operate different than everybody else? Well, let me say this about George. <laughs> George has been around since the beginning. Let me even back up further. George and I actually graduated together from IIT. Okay, so we, we know each other back then. And then George went off to Johnson & Johnson to make diapers, and I went off to Square D Company to do whatever they were doing. Okay, and then George was actually a customer of mine for about three years. And then George went off and started this business, the Contemporary Controls thing, and he's been doing it since then. I showed up in 20, 2002, uh, after my stint with uh, Square D, Modicon, con uh, Contemporary, not uh, Total Control Products. I'm really a PLC operator interface guy. That's my, that's my roots. 
Okay, this building automation stuff is like a little different. It's the same but different. You know, I'm used to normally open, normally close contacts and coils, and there's little function blocks that do strange things that I'm still trying to figure out sometimes. What the hell are they doing, you know? But anyway, why do you want to do this? But uh, to answer your question, George has had many multiple opportunities to sell the company, and he doesn't, okay? He's, he loves it. He comes in every day. Someday he'll probably slide under his desk and somebody will notice, but uh, he ain't going nowhere. Now, as far as product is concerned, I said the word ArcNet. We still build ArcNet product this day. And ArcNet's got to be 25, 30 year old technology. The killer is as long as we can get chips, we'll continue to build it. If we can't get the components, then there's nothing we can do about it. So I don't think we're going away. Uh, and I'll be honest and say I don't know what George's succession plan is. I have no idea. Uh, George and I talk periodically. I personally don't believe it's my business, so I don't ask that question. I don't know what else to tell you. I can just give you what I know. Yeah. Well, we hope we hope that vision continues. So do I. I think it's a great vision, and you know we're we're trying to learn more about you. Uh, you know we had Zach with you folks for a while, and then unfortunately Zach left us. He's off with Siemens now, and uh, and we talked to Zach. Zach's a good guy, and uh, yeah, we always feel we're part of the same industry. You know we know the Tritium folks, and they know us, and uh, you know we know some of the Johnson. You know we every this is a interesting business we're in. Everybody seems to know everybody. Our goal is to try to make it easy for you guys to use our stuff. And of course, our openness is somewhat different than the bulk of the industry. The bulk of the industry is very uh, pr proprietary based software, hardware, you know, that kind of stuff. So anyway. And that, that's why he asked the question, because ECIO was pretty open for a while. Yeah, then Johnson bought them. Well, Johnson bought them, so I mean, you go figure what Johnson's going to do. So, uh, yeah, George is George, George. George is not going to sell to anybody. I'll tell you that right now. He's had multiple offers. He and I have sat down sometimes and talked about it, but uh, uh, he ain't going nowhere. So, as long as George is there, the company stands. Now, whether any of his kids take over, I don't know. He's got three kids. He's got uh, two sons and a daughter. One of his kids, uh, his eldest kid, works with the State Department, and. Uh, He's really a great guy. I wish he'd come in. Uh, his second son works for uh, uh, Amazon. Is it Amazon? No, I'm sorry. He works for Google. And he's involved in some kind of very, from my perspective, strange thing in hardware design where they look for viruses that are embedded in hardware and things like that. So I go, okay, that's fine. And then his daughter's involved with the business uh, as far as the email marketing is concerned and the website. So. You know, she may jump into, who knows? I have really no idea what George's plan is. So. That's all I can tell you. Anything else, folks? I just, uh, I would flip your sentence around that was talking about Sedona versus Niagara. Ni it's like, if you teach them Sedona, then they can go work for Niagara. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's obviously a bigger product, more complex. You can do a whole lot more. It's great for head ends. And, you know, my knock on Niagara is they charge you for the hardware. They want a maintenance package. And, uh, and if you have any major updates, it's another charge. It's like, you know, it, it, it's, it's, an, it's an unpleasant. I'm a guy who's never been, from my background, I've never been in the uh, add-on software charge business. That's never been our, my thing. I always, I always view the software is the tool so you can sell the screws, which is the controllers or whatever else you're doing. So, you know. But that's, that makes it very useful for us. Right. Like, you know. Yeah, and plus we're trying to provide support material so that when you do build your curricula, we'll give you some hints. In fact, uh, we just had our first training session a couple of weeks back at COD with, you know, pardon me, real customers. And, uh, you know, that thing was delayed for like two and a half years because yeah. the code, we had people pay on their credit cards and we, they waited two and a half years. They said, no, we don't want a credit. We don't want a credit. We just tell us when the class is going to be. So we actually did it. So uh, we're still reviewing what we did and we may uh, release some of that to you guys because there is a nice section on controllers. There is a nice section on the bass view also. So uh, if some of that gets released, hopefully everybody's on our email newsletter. You know, you get it once a month. We try not to be too annoying. Uh, you know, make sure you're on that, and uh, that way you'll know what we're up to. So, 
And when you sign up so that you can get the SAE package, you get the option to sign up for the newsletter. Yeah. And it really is interesting. Yeah. yeah. We try not to be too annoying. Maybe we could even have one for while the educators are going to come down for a couple of days. Yeah. We coming out there. Get some Chicago hot dogs. Chicago hot dogs. We don't allow ketchup on hot dogs, people. So it's a mortal sin if you put ketchup on a hot dog. But uh, yes, sir. Do you have any plans um, on that? You said you're working on some new controllers. Would right. The VAV controller happen to be one of those? Something? Yeah, it's it's in the queue. But let me be honest, probably not high in the queue right now because of all the chaos with trying to just build regular controllers. We have talked about a VAV and it's been kind of, you know, it had a little priority for a while and then this whole crisis started with components and it's kind of just slid backward. So I, I wouldn't put any, I wouldn't say anything. I, I, my best guess would be sometime next year if we're lucky. Hey, I think that's phenomenal. It took yeah. me six years to stop and the EVIO said they needed to make a damn VAV. Yeah, well, we're screwing around. Only go so fast, do so much. It's, it's on your radar, so. Hey. Yeah, it's on the radar, that's for sure. Anything else? Oh, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> do you have any plans to put uh, the Sedona programming language in the past few threes? Uh, right now, the answer is no. Okay. We've talked about it, but we just never really moved that way. Uh, from a customer standpoint, mm -hmm. I think that would be the ability to change between Python or Sedona would be. Really and I agree with you 100%. I, uh, you know, I've done a little Python, like I think I mentioned here, and I'm very inept at it. Uh, uh, and uh, I proved myself multiple times. I, I, I view Python, by the way, as if there's no other way to accomplish the task, then you regret, you regress back to my Python. <laughs> I mean, if you can't do it any other way, then that's your only choice. That's the way I view Python. You know, it's, it's pardon me, it's the Ashit solution. Two questions on the Sedona application editor. Yeah. Do you know if you have any intentions of adding Mac support? I know the controls industry really runs on Windows. Yeah. So if not for them, it would be more for us on the educational side, students, because some of our students buy Mac computers. Yeah. No, there's never talk of Mac at our place. We don't talk. I'm not, I'm not sure we can spell the word. <laughs> That's right. That's your we, yeah. I would probably do better with the word DOS, but that's okay. <laughs> Columbus like that too. Yeah, well, you know, one of the guys, Bennett, just loves to run everything in DOS. He's just, it's just wonderful to watch him. He brings up the command window and starts typing away in there. Just only God knows what he's doing. Uh, other question on the Sedona application. Yeah. And this, this is a, honestly, this is probably my biggest complaint about the entire uh, contemporary control supply. Mm -hmm. Do you have any intention of adding some custom customizability to the editor itself to do things like change color scheme? Because I personally, when I'm trying to use the Sedona application editor, it kills me. My eyes bleed after about five minutes. Yeah. It's like when they first released Niagara 4, and the, the color schemes they had built into it were just painful. The, yeah. the tool is totally functional, but for some reason. That sounds like an IT guy right there. <laughs> I, I totally get it. I totally get it. But, you know, because you pay attention to the, what the screens you got to look at. Yeah. Can you use your computer to adjust the By a better display? Monitor. I haven't thought about trying to like invert the colors through the for accessibility or something that's an interesting idea we have another release coming out uh, i'm not sure when exactly i don't know if any of those attributes have been covered to be honest with you guys my biggest complaint is on my my uh, little uh convertible pc uh -huh. that, that has a different resolution. That it, everything looks like Yeah, Sedona, yeah. the Sedona components are screwier than heck on that thing. That's that's yeah. my biggest gripe. I think they've resolved that. Uh, that's why I'm looking for the new release, but uh, 
I'm not sure uh, about anything about color schemes or that kind of stuff. But, but uh, okay, I'll jot that one down, I'll, I'll ask. I honestly don't know. That's, that's all I could ask. Okay. You. You're welcome. You. Anything, anything, oh, yeah. I've got a similar question to his question before last. Okay. Uh, you don't expect me to remember it, do you? Yeah. yeah. Ha, <laughs> The question was about uh, the SAP, whether it would be available on other platforms. My curiosity is, is there any possibility that the devil might go to a platform independent? Mm, I wouldn't. I don't know. You're, you're thinking building the program editor into the controller, kind of like they've done with the uh, Fast View, or something no, like that. That's another way it could be done. I was actually thinking of just a software package that's platform independent. You can run it on any operating system. Actually, I can add a like my favorite one, Linux. I I can add a follow-up question that might give us an answer on that. A few years ago, there was a bloke from uh, Australia who had written a Sedona programming tool that was entirely web-based. Is he still around? Oh, no. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of remember an Australian outfit, but I don't know. It doesn't ring any bells. Because technically, one of the really cool things about Sedona um, is because it is an open protocol system. Yeah. Technically, and th there's complexity behind my statement of technically, you should be able to take like contemporary controls, Sedona application editor, and be able to add some background files into it to teach it how to talk to other brands of Sedona controllers. Um, and that was one of the huge potential advantages where you could use whichever tool you want. Um, EasyIO went and made it so challenging to do that you really can only program their controllers with their tool and can really only use their tool on their controllers. But the rest of the industry, I don't think, went that stupid way. Yeah, no, we, we are uh, Sedona application editor. Uh, probably the biggie one we use is an outfit. It used to be called GC5, Global Control 5 out of Poland. Uh, they've recently been bought by Controli out of uh, Italy. So it's now ISMA Controli because their, their systems are called IASMA. And we, we support that IO module family. But uh, yeah, we, we, can, we interact with them. We, we can bring their files into our Sedona and program our thing and, you know, so we have played around being interactive between companies. Um, one of the things we talked about, which doesn't sound like you'd be a proponent of, is that we have talked about putting the Sedona piece into our controller so that it's all integrated. It's not. No, I'd be a huge proponent yeah, for that. Yeah, okay. We're, huge uh, support. Yeah, we, we are, have talked about that. But again, right now everything's screwed up because of the component thing, redesigns, do this, do that, you know. Right now, if you guys were to order Bass Views, I'm telling you, in February of 2023, they're basically, we haven't got any, we can't get pies, so we're, we're in deep trouble. Uh, we are working on a Bass View Lite. I'm not sure what that means. Nobody's told me. They just put some words out at Joe, said, hey, Joe, we're looking at a Bass View Lite. Uh, thanks. Okay. okay. Yeah, exactly. Whatever the hell that means. So, uh, but they are looking at using some other hardware, other obviously than the pie. So, uh, you know. All I, can, I, all I can tell you is that the things are very fluid <laughs> back at the ranch, as I call it. It's very fluid. Oh, trying to, we just got our router problem, I think, resolved as of today. That's what my phone call was about. So uh, we're, we're, we're finding a chip that goes in our BASRT-V, which is our most popular product. And we only have 1,700 left. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, when you sell 10,000 a year, 1,700 isn't exactly a lifesaver. So, uh, Yes, sir. Yeah, I was just curious. I noticed in your client list you had Johnson Controls, you had Siemens. Yeah. What do you, they're making their own products, their own Well, software. Johnson Controls, 
Actually, we're in the router business, which I just mentioned, the Bass Router. It takes MSTP to back that IP, IP back to MSTP. Johnson Controls actually caused us to create that. They came over to us and wanted to uh, do a uh, portable, uh, uh, portable device to be able to lap their guys to, to go out in the field with their laptops and uh, configure the MSDP devices. So they came to us and we actually built them a portable router. And then we said, to, and we build a portable router too, which is just like the Johnson router. And then we said to them, well, did you want to look at a DIN rail version? And they said, nah, that's okay. Uh, can we build the DIN rail version? Sure, okay. So that's become our actually our most popular product. So Johnson Controls, prior to that, a lot of what, what they, we call NICS, network interface cards, which was the ArcNet stuff, that came from us and we supplied that to Johnson. So that's why they're on the list. And they've gone way down. I mean, they used to be a half million dollar customer and now if we're lucky they're 50K a year because all they're buying is portable routers. Uh, so, and, but we still looked at a couple of projects. They got some other interface gizmos. You know, they're always cooking up something new and sometimes they don't want to do it. So they try to farm it out. So we're always, you know, we're always listening and seeing. Uh, we, we do a bunch of brand labels with folks. Uh, you know, Distech is a big brand label for us. Uh, um, we also do it with uh, Price Electronics. Uh, and then there's some other smaller folks we do brand labels for. And it's typically for product that we have. Uh, we have built some uh, special stuff, companies like Cetra. Um, we got uh, oh, the boys that out of... Uh, Salt Lake City that do the interface to the uh, old uh, ArcNet stuff. Uh, S S4, S4 Technologies, we built some custom product for them. So, I mean, we'll, like I said, you know, you're, you're standard stuff, okay, from my perspective. But we do do these uh, ODM stuff or the custom stuff, you know. Uh, not necessarily our strength, but something we do if people like what we're doing. Yep. So you're the manufacturer that's manufacturing those portable routers for Johnson Controls now? You betcha. Sweet. When I get back into town and I get my controller back, I'll be making a phone call to Contemporary Control Center. Yeah, we're, we're the same guys. <laughs> Johnson can't help me. Yeah, we're the same guys. Yeah, call us up. you got a question or problem, call him. Diego, you drive Diego crazy. I love it. He drives me crazy at times. He sells, Diego loves to sell things we don't have. Just come on, Diego. <laughs> Joe, Joe is, if it ain't stock, I don't want to deal with it, you know? It, uh, so we're kind of little different prospects of life, you know? But oh, anyway. He's very nice, though. He's the, is it, no, don't bring me wrong. He's a great guy. But, but from a sales point of view, and he and I go around, uh, you know, Diego, we ain't got any of those. Diego, we ain't got none of those. You know, what do you want me to do? Produce it out of, you know, thin air? Can't do that. So anyway. All right, folks, I can yes. One last question. Sure. Uh, you said you, you're having logistics problems. Well, we have that, but right now we have a component problem, more in the logistics. We're trying to find the components we need is more challenging than... Where, where did they come from? Well, it comes from all over. Some comes from China, some comes from stateside. Obviously, those components aren't made stateside, but we have, you know, uh, not, not Newark. Uh, the one begins with A. Uh, crap, what's the name of it? Again, I'm not part of that end of the world, but, uh, you know, we, we can't find components. You know, and we do world searches, by the way. We have our China office look for the stuff. We have the, our you know, purchasing group here and uh, Downers looking for it. And we actually sometimes try to get Germany and or the UK to find components. We give them a component number and send them out and say, look for this stuff. So it's a uh, real problem. Do you, does Contemporary Controls make a uh, cellular gateway? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I Talk to Diego. Down. He'll... Or Diego, yeah, talk to start with Diego. He, he's more, and if he's not completely familiar, then you'll end up talking to Arpadep. So, yeah. And their their support team is really fantastic. We try. I had a, just a couple of questions related to stuff for this workshop. I sent in just a general help request, and I had answers back literally the next day. Um, and I was, of course, because I'm a night owl, I'm sending these at like 10 o'clock at night. So the fact that I'm getting still an answer the next working day is enough. Alrighty. Well, everybody, thank you very much for 
listening and thank you very much for using the product. And again, if, if you have issues, just call. We answer the phone and uh, we'll see if we get you to the right person. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you.